Hello YouTubers, uh, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, integrating uh, OData in the new ASP.NET uh, Core 5 or ASP.NET Core vNext. Um, in, the, in the past few weeks, you know, uh, Microsoft announced uh, their new uh, .NET uh, version with the .NET 5 and with .NET 5 it basically is a step closer to a full merger between the .NET framework and .NET Core and uh, one of the most interesting features about and the most powerful features actually about um, ASP.NET uh, Core APIs is that the ability is that your ability to integrate OData uh, with the API and be able to leverage that kind of power that um, allows query the data through uh, RESTful calls, be able to aggregate and orchestrate and form your data however you want to form it. And today I'm going to walk you through uh, how to add that. In fact, actually, there, there isn't really much changes uh, going on, but uh, in order for you to get this up and running, you probably want to install Visual Studio Preview uh, 20, 2019. Let's share my screen here. And I'm going to go for an ASP.NET Core web application. And here is .NET OData with .NET 5 demo. So here's our API, it's just a, a simple API. Here is a create, and then we're gonna select .NET Core 5, 5.0. And here's our API, I'm just gonna click create. All right. Here we go. And uh, with that, let's just first uh, test our API. Let's just make sure our stuff is working as expected. Obviously, they're giving you out of the box, you know, weather forecast. It's already set up. Um, you know what? Let's just clear up this guy real quick, you know, because I really don't like this out of the box example. Also, let me increase the font in here real quick for the people watching this on their phones. Let's go with 200%. We go everything is super large here but it's totally worth it so let's just do that here we go all right so i'm getting rid of the controller i'm just adding my own controller it's going to be a very simple controller a um an empty empty api controller with here's an empty api control let's call it values let's call it students controller there you go. So here's that. That's your students controller. And let's just go here and just build in a simple um, HTTP GET endpoint that returns a a public uh, action result. Write a list of students. And this is GET all students like this. And this guy basically returns OK and then a list of students, right? We're going to get to the list of students here in a second. All right, let's just uh, go ahead and build a model just like how we normally do. Let's go ahead and create a little folder in here. Let's call it models. And in the models, let's create a quick student model. So here's student.cs. Let's give that student some, some properties like good, ID, uh, string, name, and maybe, I don't know, grade like that. So here's here's our student model. If you do control period, you can actually clean up all the uh, unnecessary uh, usings. And since we're not run really running any test, I'm just going to give you a little bit of space here so you can see everything. All right. So here with this guy going, and then in the students controller, I'm just going to return a a new list of students, right? And the list of students will have a bunch of students in it. There's new student, you know, here's an ID, good, new good. Uh, let's see, uh, name, overall, Bahen, and the grade, let's say 100. Let's copy that. Let's copy a couple of those. There you go. And let's put in here. Um, Josh McCall. Let's give Josh 150. And we have in here Kailu Hu. Let's give Kailu 90. All right, so just a bunch of 
bunch of records, bunch of stuff. So this is a normal API. It's going to hit the API. You can also really quickly go into your properties, launch settings, and you can control what endpoint you want the launch settings to be. Needs us to say this is application URL launch 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 URL. Oh, it's launching in, uh, can, uh, directly into Swagger. We probably want it to launch into students, right? So it's gonna, it's gonna be slash API slash students. Let's see if that one works. So this is your application URL, and it's gonna be slash API slash students. Let's run this guy real quick. This is fully .NET 5. Uh, it has all, you know, the uh, capabilities as you can see here http.net5 api slash students and it gives me back uh, these three students now let's enable o data in this you know just like just like we talked in the past you know you, you can very easily do this with just as many as four lines of code uh, the new template as you can see comes in with swagger and all that kind of stuff which is pretty cool but it's not um, necessary if you're not going to use it you're just going to want to make sure what you know you know what you're doing and you know you use what you want to use uh, let's go ahead and add OData in here so uh, Sam Zhu from the .NET team uh, sorry OData team you know has already provided a nice library that we could use so if I go here and say OData for this project in search OData ASP.NET Core OData that's basically the one that we really care about ASP.NET Core Microsoft ASP.NET Core OData and there we go not this one this one here pre-release 758 preview so this one here is the one that we want let's install OData 8 real quick with the EDM with all the magic with all the good the good stuff and then let's go back in here and let's go ahead and enable OD. so just like we did in the past if you go into services add O data that's our data right here and then in this guy here you can say endpoints dot enable dependency injection like this Let's see, endpoints. Let's see, we have all of that stuff, ASP.NET Core, we have all our OData stuff. And um, this is our endpoints. Using endpoints and endpoints dot enable dependency injection like this I might not have pulled the exact right version there might be breaking changes what if I took this um, pre-release version down a notch let's take this guy down by 7.5 that should technically work 7.5 accept Okay, and then in here, let's see if we can get this. Yeah, there you go. So enable dependency injections, that's at 7.5. And then we don't need this guy in here, so this is fine. And uh, what else do we want to do? We want to go and say endpoints dot uh, select filter uh, expand. I don't know, whatever, whatever you want to do. So you have select, filter, expand. You got all that running. And the last thing you want to do is that you just want to go in here and say enable query. Enable query, which will basically enable OData in your, in your work. So let's just kick this guy off and let's see if that actually works for us. So here is the browser, API slash students. Mm -hmm. And then I could go and say dollar sign filter grade greater than uh, 100 there you go and that's your that's your uh, uh, um, OData enablement in ASP.NET uh, 5 it's just as simple as that let's see if the select is working though because with the select you're probably gonna need to install um, install an additional yeah see if you do a select in here a lot of people ask me that question they said well if I have the select you know it doesn't really give me the um, the result back right away what you really want to do is you want to install uh, this uh, new package as you as you might have seen in some of my 
uh, uh, blog posts the Newton soft JSON so let's just install this guy it's right here it's available you can install it right away like this and then uh, let's try this out this way let's see if that will fix our select statement just for people who would be wondering you know you know this worked but how come the select statement is not working uh, I think I also have to add this into your controller. So add um, uh, JSON options. I think it's add new and soft. Let's see. What did we do in the past? Add Newton soft. If you go back a little bit, you can actually. Let's see. Uh, you can go in here and actually enable. At the very end here, I mentioned that you need to install a NuGet package, Newton soft, and then with Newton soft, you probably want to go and say. All of this is good. Configurations at Newtonsoft JSON. This guy right here. So that's the guy that we want to add in here. Probably missed a add Newtonsoft JSON. Let's see. Manage browse Newtonsoft JSON. Yeah, this guy here. Well, Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC Newtonsoft JSON. So install this guy here. Not this one, the other one, uh, not the newtonsoft.json, it's actually this one. And then now we can probably pull that in. And now if you're on your application, it should actually work very, very straightforward without any issues. There's students, and then dollar sign, select name, and here's the name. Everything just works fine. So that's, that's OData with uh, .NET 5. It should just work straightforward, just like how you do uh, anything else. I might. Um, uh, release another video, you know, talk about um, uh, using OData uh, 8, you know, there might have been some breaking changes in there, you know, and there might be some changes that might, you might be interested in on some new features. Uh, but for now, you can actually very easily enable OData. You can actually do um, a lot of things like, you know, all, all the operations that you may think of. If you want to go and say filter name equal um, Josh McCall like this it should give you Josh McCall. You have the entire feature enabled for you in .NET 5 without any issues at all. Just make make sure that you're actually looking at the right stuff. And I'm not gonna I'm gonna push this um, uh, project to GitHub. Uh, if you go into uh, Edit, because some people ask me how do I upgrade to .NET 5, you know if you look in here you can see the target framework .NET, .NET 5, .NET 5.0. So you can actually do this uh, really easily. Uh, I'm also very highly recommend going and looking at what Sam Zhu said in um, in this video in here. Uh, sorry, in this article. Uh, if you look at move OData to .NET 5, he basically talked a little bit in detail about uh, all the um, things you want to do. Is although that this one is actually 7.5 which was beta at a time, so 7.4, 7.5 now is even more um, uh, uh, more stable, and you can use it with your .NET 5 APIs. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, OData, for, for those who are not familiar, uh, you know, is a very, very powerful feature that you can add to your API that can offer you tremendous amount of features, and it can save you a lot of time, you know, in the least time possible. Um, uh, I really highly recommend following, following the blog posts on the OData team and also trying it out yourself and hopefully you'll get the benefit of it and be able to uh, leverage it for very high enterprise level performance applications. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, feel free to reach, um, put, a, put a comment in the comment section. I'll make sure I put all the, the links that you need in the description of this video and I'll see you in another video. Thank you so much for watching. See you in another video. Take care.